Welcome to this very first basic video about ordinary differential equations. For this video, I assume that you are familiar with the equation of exponential growth. I have two videos about exponential growth if you like to watch those first. Also, you need to understand the basics about derivatives. Ordinary differential equations can be used for modeling and simulations, which can help us to make predictions. For example, these three equations can be used to simulate how a virus is spread in a population. By analyzing such simulations, we can predict the time for the peak, where we have a maximum number of infected individuals. By changing the equations a bit, we can analyze the effect of different interventions. Differential equations can also be used to simulate how the amount of a drug changes over time in the human body and simulate how the number of HIV viruses changes in the body over time during an infection. Ordinary differential equations can also be used in association with nonlinear regression to estimate parameter values, such as the half-life of drugs. To understand ordinary differential equations, we'll here use a super simple example. In this example, we place $10 in a bank account. In other words, we have $10 on the count from the start. The money then grows by 7% each year. As we have seen in a previous video, the following equation can be used to calculate how much money we have after a certain number of years. Where t is the number of years, y0 is the initial amount of money we placed in the bank account, and k is the continuous growth rate which can be calculated like this if you know the discrete growth rate r. In this example, we know that the discrete growth rate is 7% per year. Suppose that we like to calculate how much money we have after 35 years. We then plug in the values for y0 and k and set t to 35 and do the math. We see that we have about $106 on the bank account of the 35 years. So, what is the growth rate of the amount of money of the 35 years? That would be the same thing as asking what the slope of the tangent line is that just touches the curve when t is equal to 35. From the previous lecture about Euler's number, we know that the derivative of an exponential function with the base e is equal to k times the function itself. We know that the value of the exponential function is equal to about 106.5 when t is equal to 35. If we begin the numbers and do the math, we see that the derivative of the function when t is equal to 35 is 7.2. This means that the slope of the tangent line is 7.2. The equation that you see here is actually a differential equation because this equation involves a function and the derivative of that function. This part represents the value of y at a certain time point, which means that we could simply use the letter y that represents the value of y at a certain time point. This is the standard way to represent differential equations. This equation tells us the derivative of the slope of y when we make a small change in t. For example, we move 0.1 seconds forward in time is equal to some constant times the value of y at the given time point. Let's try this equation to see if we can calculate the derivative when t is equal to 35. We plug in the value of k and the value of y when t is equal to 35 and do the math, we see that the slope is equal to 7.2. This is exactly the same slope we calculated earlier by using this equation. In other words, differential equations can be used to calculate the derivative if we know the value of y. Suppose that we like to calculate the slope of the curve when t is equal to 40. The problem is that we do not know the value of y when t is equal to 40. 
we could of course use this equation to calculate the value of y when t is equal to 40. But in most cases, we do not have this type of equation when we work with differential equations. In addition, by using this differential equation, we also want to generate this kind of curve that tells us the value of y over a range of values of t. We therefore first need to solve the differential equation. This can be done by trying to find the analytic solution or solve the equation numerically with a computer. The problem is that it is quite hard and sometimes even impossible to find the analytic solution for more complicated differential equations. In comparison, solving differential equations numerically is super easy even though we have a system of many differential equations. We will first see how we can find the analytic solution to this simple equation. The first step to find the analytic solution to this differential equation is to move all y terms and t terms to each side. We first multiply with dt on both sides. And then we divide both sides by y. Next we integrate both sides. Which results in the following equation. We can combine these two constants into just one. That we call c. We now take the exponent on both sides. Which results in this equation. e to the power of natural log of y is y. By using the exponential rules, we can rewrite the right hand side to this. Since e to the power of c is just a constant, we can replace this with a constant that we here denote as y0. If we swap place of these, we'll end up with the equation of exponential growth. If we plug in the values of the continuous growth rate and the initial amount of money we have in the bank account, we can create the following curve because the equation will tell us the amount of money we have for any given value of t. To find the analytic solution, we had to do a lot of math, even though our differential equation was simple. For more complicated equations, it will be really hard to find the analytic solution, and sometimes it is simply not possible. This is why more complicated differential equations are usually solved numerically. Remember that differential equations tells us the slope, or the derivative, or a certain value of y. But how do we know the value of y? If we have access to the analytic solution, we can use this function to calculate the value of y at a certain time point. But as I told you earlier, in most cases, such a function might not exist. Then we have to solve the equation numerically. Remember that we previously defined y0 to represent the initial amount of money we put in the bank account. We started with $10. This parameter is however not included in this equation. Differential equations have, instead, what is called an initial condition, which usually tells how much we have at time point zero. To solve this equation numerically, we therefore start from time point zero where we know the value of y, which is 10 in this example. Same as before, k is here equal to 0 0.0676, which corresponds to the discrete interest rate of 7% per year. We can therefore calculate the derivative at time point zero, because we know the growth rate and the initial amount of money we have in the bank account. The derivative is, at time point zero, 0 0.676. Let's zoom in on the first time points. This number tells us that our money increases from $10 to $10.676. We can therefore draw a line that starts from time point zero to time point one, where y increases by 0 0.676. After one year, we therefore know that we have $10.676 and that the derivative at year 1 is now 0 0.722, which means that the money grows to 11.4 the second year. If we continue to iterate like this, we will be able to approximately reproduce the blue curve by using our differential equation. 
We'll discuss how to solve differential equations numerically in a video about Euler's step method. Finally, we'll just discuss a few things about the notations that are used in differential equations. In our previous example, y represented how much money we had in the bank account. However, we can use another letter, such as n, to denote the amount of money we have. The reason why I have used a t down here is that t usually represents time. We can of course use another letter, but since differential equations are usually used to simulate how something changes over time, we commonly use a t. This notation tells us how much y changes when t is changing. The derivative with respect to t is equal to k times y. Usually we call this notation dy dt. This was the end of this video about the basics of ordinary differential equations. In the next video we'll have a look at Euler's step method. Thanks for watching.